It's easy to see that the season is over here in Marnik. Big cargo ships is picking up sailboats and motor yachts. And as more and more boats also sail out either back to Europe or to hurricane safe spots, this anchorage is less crowded for every day. We are still tied up together doing boat projects and preparing for the next destination. It's still no rush as we are all ready to departure within one hour. It's an old saying that uh, a sailor's schedule and uh, cruising plan is written in the sand on low tide. I think this uh, counts for me as well. A few episodes ago I was telling you guys about not being sure where to next. I was planning to sail back to Europe um, to cross the Atlantic single-handed and hopefully be able to cruise another season in Greece. The idea of giving up my Pacific dream has been very hard to accept. We are in the Pacific. And waves. <laughs> so I've been thinking a lot about my opportunities to sail west again for a new attempt of canal crossing in Panama. Reports from friends in Panama tells me that it's again possible to transit the Panama Canal and is therefore tempting to sail back to Panama. However, the monsoon season with crazy thunderstorms in Panama is not very tempting. I can't even remember how many close calls I had with lightning strikes there. So I guess a few stops on the way could be an alternative. And see if there is an opening to get into either the ABC Islands or even Colombia to wait out the hurricane season in the Caribbean and the crazy electrostorm season in Panama. One of my biggest dreams has been to cross the Pacific Ocean. So instead of sailing east over the Atlantic Ocean, I have spent my time here in Martinique to do some upgrades and boat works. Hey, I have some water. While doing boat works, a funny local guy with his kayak asked kindly for permission to come on board to show me some handcrafted jewelry. This one is super because it's inox. Oh. Very strong. Oh. This one is oh, that's like nice. this. Yeah. Very, very strong. But the problem with this or this, because this one, so after a few months of lockdown, uh, you can imagine how difficult it has been for people trying to make a living of tourism here. So when this friendly guy uh, paddle over in his kayak and want to show some of his products, I thought it was a good idea to uh, uh, try to uh, support him a little bit. And I decided to buy this uh, beautiful bracelet uh, from this guy. And we got this one that is supposed to be chopped up. Atumo, um, so look on Google. Uh, yeah. What do you call this? Atumo. Atumo. It's me for every pain. It's Creole. Atumo. Oh, uh, cool. It's not the first time I have received some natural medicine from locals. When I was in Bocas del Toro, I was a bit sick and not sure what it was. And Kadir, or Captain Barbosa as he likes to be called, made me a mixture. This is the medicine man of Bocas. <laughs> yes, why? <laughs> Yeah, there we go. We're gonna put a couple drops of lime. You know, this one is very dry. I don't know why. <laughs> no juice. Oh my God. Okay, organic in the water. Yeah. There we go. Where's the other recipe? So this is where the organic materials goes. Vodka. Ginger. Right here. Yeah. Okay, guys, don't forget the nature provide you of everything, right? I'm not buying the cocktail that Barbosa uh, made. <laughs> yeah. I got Ooh. the cure. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, life is pretty normal here in Martinique at the moment. Inviting each other for dinners and doing normal stuff like dishwashing. I do have a dishwasher on board, but I never use it, as I don't mind doing the dishes. But the best thing about hanging out together like we do now is that we can help each other with different boat projects. My old navigation lights has been a little bit unreliable. And finally, I had time to replace the old ones, including the cables. These lights have a really poor design, as they are full of holes for water to penetrate into the electronics. Salt water and electronics is never a good combination. And even here Bavaria has not used marine graded cables. This is definitely not the right place to save a few euros. Unfortunately, this is more the rule than exceptions among most modern yachts. 
And of course, the new ones does not fit the old holes. So I have to make new holes and also use the old cables to pull the new cable through the cable gate. Even is really a badass with his sewing machine and has even made his own bimini. It's amazing to see all his clever solutions with everything from removable pockets for lead strips in the roof to zippers for sun covers to drop down on the sides. This is the V3 sewing workshop. You know, uh, your table is bigger than our boat. <laughs> so uh, it's very good to make uh, projects like this, which is our uh, bimini. This is the best part. It's like something is born out of this canvas. Suddenly we can see a window. We can see the head of the window. And um, soon there will be, hopefully, a whole window. b Free's massive foredeck is a great space for different projects. And it's always more social and fun to help each other out and do projects together. And sometimes an extra pair of eyes and opinion is good to have. Almost there and it's just wiring and sealing left. We definitely had deserved a cold one now. Well done. This morning we had planned for a sightseeing and rented a car for only 18 euros. Hanna from Norway lives here and had invited all of us for a guided round trip to show us more of Marnenik. There we go again! Road trip! <laughs> <laughs> Things are slowly getting back to normal here now and it's amazing to be allowed to rent a car and get off the boat for a whole day. This is my third time on Marnik, but it's my first time driving around this beautiful island with a car. Experience this kind of roads makes you forget you are on a tiny island. It reminds more of a replica of Europe. Even this cathedral is a miniature replica of the famous Basilica of the Scared Heart in Paris, built in 1875. And as you can see, being prepared for opening again, with markers helping out in social distance. After visiting this cathedral, we continued with a short stop to look at the mountains before the highlight of this road trip, to see the famous Saint Pierre that used to be called Paris of the West Indies. 5th of May 1902, the Caribbean's Paris became the new Pompeii, as they experienced volcanic eruption faster and greater than any other documented. Only survivor was a guy sitting in jail after being drunk. Saint Pierre was among the most modern cities anywhere, with electricity and telephones to everyone when at the same time in the US only were available to only 5%. We also learn a little bit about the Beckys that represent a white minority controlling most business and industry in Martinique. Being a Norwegian, this kind of waterfalls does not blow me away. However, it was a refreshing stop and of course we had to help each other out with filming and photos. Being the tourist of the day. <laughs> Hanna speaks several languages fluently, including French. This is very convenient for us as she translates everything. We had a delicious lunch at this restaurant on our way to the beach. Now it's even allowed to go for a swim at public beaches. So Hanna took us to this beautiful beach at the Atlantic side of Martinique.
Next morning I had decided to go into Le Marine to buy a complete Raymarine set for my other hydraulic system. I've been reading a lot about which system that worked well with my hydraulic pump and it turned out to be the Raymarine as best. Finally I got my hands on the Raymarine Evolution. So that's for my secondary hydraulic autopilot system. So I'm gonna unbox this. Let's see what we find in here. So I have some uh, cables. Um, lots of stuff here. I will now also have read the nuns on the autopilot with two separate computers and the different hydraulic systems. If you remember from my Atlantic crossing, the autopilot failed big time. I tried to fix it, but unfortunately Lamar don't support their own products with spare parts. So to me that's like my old toilet. Who want things on board you cannot service with spare parts. After giving up on Lamar, I sailed to St. Lucia, which is the neighbor island of Martinique. St. Lucia is tax free for yachts in transit and also could help me with everything I needed to build a hydraulic autopilot system. But I have not been 100% happy with my self-made solution. So being back in Martinique, I want to improve the first solution and upgrade with a new additional standalone system. So tomorrow morning I'm gonna start mounting the new computer and cables from Ray Marine. Very nice Maria. Thank you. You're welcome. This is amazing. We are on Ramsalt. Yes, and this is why I like Maria. <laughs> yeah, because he's so <laughs> good at making uh, awesome dinners. <laughs> this is really nice. Yeah. And we have uh, Harald here as well. Hey. <laughs> okay, cheers for the chef. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, we have to. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> So now it's time to mount the uh, Aku 400 unit uh, computer uh, and as it says it should be vertically and I have the gyro compass that I have to find location for and um, yeah I'm gonna put this up here also added a terminal box with fuses for power supplies and future upgrades a little bit more wiring and I'm done but first I'm gonna mount the 9-axis gyro compass under the bridge in the center of my boat. This does not look like much, but it's lots of work with components, cables and wiring behind this tiny display. So the only thing I have to uh, mount now is the 9-axis um, uh, gyro compass. It's actually a pretty clever thing. It's 3-axis um, gyro, 3-axis pitch and 3-axis roll. So gives a signal to the computer and it learn how the boat behaves uh, in the waves. So it's going to be really interesting to see. But unfortunately uh, the cable was too short that, well, this is like nothing. So I need to get my hands on a longer cable. Uh, luckily uh, it's not so far from here, so just take the thing in and go shopping. In Caribbean, it's lock it or lose it. After picking up the new cable, I have to go back to the workshop to um, pick up my old outboard engine. Yes, I'm going to uh, the workshop to. Uh, pick up my engine, my outboard, so let's see what I have to say. Super fast service and solution oriented. And they offered me 3 to 400 euros for my damaged outboard if I bought a new one. The reason is this was not considered to be a warranty case. They charged me 80 euro to see what was wrong with my outboard, which is fair enough. One year old. <laughs> However, I think they should give me a better offer, as I spent 14,000 euros in the same store 12 months ago. However, I have already bought a new outboard and I'm in love with my new Yamaha. Slightly overpowered, but it's just awesome. 
Back on board B3, it's time to continue with my project. I got my hands on the cable I needed to complete my setup, to the ridiculous price of 42 euros. My new 9-axis compass can be mounted almost everywhere, but some claim it gives best result if it's in the middle of the boat. So that's why I needed a longer cable. Time to connect the last cable, turn on the power and find out if I have succeeded with my last project. Tomorrow we have to move out from the anchorage. It's the 1st of June and the official starting of the hurricane season. Our beautiful anchorage for the last week is a hurricane hall. And we are not allowed to be anchored here after today, because it's where you go in if a hurricane arrives. So when Haral on Sofia and Ramsalt with Marianne Avin moves into Limarin, I went outside for a sea trial with a new autopilot. And to produce some more drinking water. After dropping my anchor, I could start with some video editing while my water maker fills up the water tank. At the same time, I could charge my computers as I need to run my generator to produce 220 to my water maker. My water maker is a beast and super efficient. However, it needs 1 kilowatt and it's more than I can take out from my batteries. Super happy with my new autopilot setup. This looks very promising and lower my shoulders. We free have now redundancy also in the autopilot system. I don't want to repeat the situation I had during the Atlantic crossing. We are definitely getting closer to the hurricane season. Witnessing boats start to leave Martinique, either by themselves or as cargo on big ships. I feel confident and ready for my next long distance sail and also happy with my decisions on giving the Pacific a new try. Anchored next to Avin, he told me there was something below the surface under his boat. So we had to jump in the water and to check it out. Anchoring in Martinique can offer you a surprise or two. Luckily none of us have this one on our hook. This is one of the reasons why I have scuba equipment on board, so I can untangle my chain or anchor if I should get something like this on my hook. This time we could just enjoy the experience and surface again and get ready for Avin and Maria's barbecue night on board their boat Ramsal. Beautiful evening on board Ramsal. Um, oh evening. yes, ribs. Barbecue. Got a lot of ribs. Nice. Not so far from the free. I have these awesome neighbors. Cheers. Cheers. Best neighbors. Best neighbors on this anchorage. See what that are. Best. What? It's amazing! <laughs> Haral, Captain Haral, the master chef. As both Haral and I are solo sailors, having this kind of social dinners is much appreciated. Uh, this is Avin and Maria. <laughs> yeah. <Another> boat. <laughs> Thank you for watching!
sing in my 